This looks freaking amazing. I honestly, I'm, I'm so happy right now. Drooling. 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 Yeah. That's good. Yeah, right there, babe. Yeah. Boom. That's what you oh, get. Oh, that looks so delicious. Yes. What's up, legends? Welcome to another amazing episode. Today, we're gonna take a whole new look on things and a whole new approach to what we do here as legends on the channel. I'm a career chef by trade. So what I do for a living and what I'm good with with my hands is cooking. Tonight we're gonna to actually experiment a little bit. We're gonna play with a couple of recipes. We're gonna plan out the rest of the week and we're gonna to try to eat Filipino, cook Filipino as an American chef here in the Philippines. If you've been following along for a while, you know that we started out when we got back from Indonesia on our last trip staying in a big uh, traditional Nipa house. We've actually moved into a tiny little studio for right now. So we're gonna hop into our tiny little studio and make do with the little kitchen that we have because it is what it is here in the islands. And we're gonna try to make some traditional dishes. Follow me. Got the office going right now. Gotta love it, you know, scrolling. If you haven't seen what our channel looks like on full screen, computer, or TV, you need to check it out. We've put a lot of work into it. And uh, just got done finalizing our newest thumbnail for our new episode coming out tonight while we're filming. Here's our tiny little kitchen. I'm proud of it. I think it's spectacular. That's our restroom in there. We're gonna make it work today. We just got done going shopping. We got a bag full of baboy or pork here, as you can see. We've got our local veggies. We've got some dragon fruit for the week. Alyssa's got a bunch of veggies and fruit already chopped up in the fridge. We've got peppers, onions. We've got the normal green beans here. We've got some green chilies. We've got some green onion. We've got the rice and all of our main uh, starches and ingredients and our pan seat and our noodles. We have our tiny kitchen here. This is it. This is what we have. This is what most people would survive on around here, if not even more than what most people have. And we're gonna make it work. Tonight, we're gonna take this tiny little pot and we're gonna bust out some amazing mango bean sabao soup. One of my favorite dishes uh, that I've been eating lately around here as we go hang out with friends and as we go experience what different yayas and different aunties and mamas cook around here traditionally is sabao. Since we can't get a lot of beef here, we really rely on pork or baboy here in the Philippines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my own little turn and my own little approach, Filipino style on, on baboy sabao or sabao baboy, pork soup. Traditionally, one of the first things you do when you're in a kitchen here is you cook rice, especially in the Philippines. So I've already gone ahead and busted out some rice for the day. We got the rice going, it's perfect. There should even be a little bit of dukats or duks, duks as they say, dukats, or the sticky dried brown rice on the bottom. I always kind of leave it, leave it on the burner a little bit longer, hoping that I get that nice sweet brown rice at the bottom because that's my favorite. We've got some killer pork right here. We'll break it up and we'll show you. So I've got a really nice little pork tenderloin right here that we got down the street from El Rayon's. I've got some pork belly right here, which I'll probably take a little bit of tonight for the sabao, but the rest of it, we're gonna, we're gonna marinate these two and we're gonna bust them out in tomorrow and the next day's meals. And then for tonight, some backbone and some ribs. Beautiful ribs. I got a lot, look at that. Look at that marrow in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna turn this into some pork soup. We're gonna see how it goes. And we're also gonna incorporate these mango beans. Mango beans, as they're called here. I need this pot to make soup. So first things first, gotta put away the rice. Ooh, look, I did not cook it hot enough or long enough to get uh, my dukats on the bottom. So I'm still learning. There's this fine line with the perfect, with the perfect sticky rice here. Uh, a lot of them, they do their rice pots over open flame or charcoal and uh, open fire. And that's where you definitely get that higher heat and that char at the bottom. I've been cooking almost everything so far on this little hot plate that we have, uh, which is amazing, but it doesn't put that fire heat underneath the pot and pan. And these are really thin aluminum pans, so I gotta be careful with it. We're gonna get this right. But first, gotta wash the mango beans. So this is by far the first time that I have ever worked with mango beans. Now, we are far from the first time I've ever eaten mango beans. I love these things. Um, I have experienced so many different versions of sabao or dishes where these are made traditionally here in the Philippines that I just had to start experimenting with them. It's pretty unreal the kind of capabilities they have. Their flavors vary completely. Um, I've had them kind of sweet and I've had them really sour and savory feeling, almost like a caper. Don't really know the mango bean to liter 
ratio either, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rock. Looks like, uh, oh, there's a, oh, okay, so that's how they come in that long beam. Wow, okay. You can see what they come in, this long tubular beam stock. And there's your mongos. Okay, if I still have to add veggies and pork and water, I think two bags is enough for now. So for me personally, I honestly don't have anybody to instruct me or teach me, and I can only go off of what I've heard from the mamas and the aunties and the yayas so far. So I know that I need to wash these vigorously, and I know that I need to uh, rinse them and then get them in a clean, fresh water for a boil off. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna kind of treat it like I treat rice here, where I wash it twice with tap water, and then I do a final wash rinse with the fresh drinkable water, potable water. It's a pretty wild sound though. And uh, I can see that there's kernels and dust and things coming off of the top of it already. So you can see how things have settled over the top, and now I'm just gonna slowly strain out all those floaters and those dead seeds right off the top. And now we're gonna rinse and do it again. One more time, make sure they're washed really good. And then we're just gonna go ahead and let that go. Try not to lose any more there, and boom. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead with the potable drinking water and fill them up just enough so that they can blanch or steam off on their own. And I'm also gonna go ahead and start prepping some veggies and add some local veggies to this as well. All right, so right about there, give it about uh, maybe about three quarters of an inch or an inch of water above it. Now we're gonna take her over to the stove, get her turned on. Light on. Turn it on one, I only have two settings, so <laughs> one of two. Now it's uh, time to come over, process some of this pork, process some of these veggies. So dealing with your meat, processing your proteins, especially in their raw form, uh, here in the Philippines is really crucial. Meat tends to get transferred from wholesaler to butcher to truck to transport to Roro Ferry across oceans and seas. Then they get transferred to smaller meat markets like the one we have here in Dolho where I got this meat from. So it's seen the light of day, the heat of the sun, and uh, the depth of a freezer three or four times. So by the time you get to actually work your meat here in the islands, you really wanna give it as much respect and attention as you can. With that being said, I'm gonna work the meat and the proteins and get the next three days of protein marinated and put away before I take a deep breath and start working on the rest of the dishes. Step one, we're gonna take the uh, pork knuckles or bones and ribs that we have ready for our sabao tonight. And we're just gonna set those aside Look at that, all that marrow, there's a reason I got this. Oh yeah, stoked for this one. Now remember, for the soup tonight, I wanna to use some of this belly, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop this end off right here. But at the same time, I want pork belly for tomorrow's dish, which I'm gonna make, which is gonna be pancit. So for tomorrow's pancit, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this pork belly down a few times. One, two, three. We're gonna go ahead and get it in this container here and we're gonna get that marinating and set off to the side. I'm gonna take this piece right here and add this to the soup. That way we get a little bit of fat and stuff in tonight's sabao. And of course then I've got this beautiful tenderloin which I'm gonna go ahead and probably use in an entirely different dish. Now when I'm dealing with the pork tenderloin I like to get a couple of cuts in it long ways and then a couple of cuts in it short ways. I do not cut all the way through it but this allows me to get nice and tender with it, uh, even cutting through some of the silver skin there. I'm gonna basically keep everything that's on this thing because I'm gonna cook it down to a point where none of it matters. Now, for tonight's pork belly, uh, for the addition to the sabao, I wanna get this chopped up as small as possible. As you can see, I need to clearly sharpen my knives. It's kind of embarrassing. We're just gonna add those right in over here with the rest of the pork that goes in tonight's sabao and set that aside. All right, so I gotta wash my hands real quick. First things first, we're gonna grab a little bit of the soy sauce. Now we reuse bottles, this was the sweet chili sauce, but the Silver Swan soy sauce traditionally comes in a plastic bag pack here, a sealed pack, kind of like, like an old Capri Sun pouch. 
And so every time we bust it open, it's just kind of in a flimsy bag on the counter. So we always make sure to reuse our bottles here, especially our glass ones. We're gonna marinate the pork belly and the pork tenderloin together overnight, but uh, we're gonna marinate, we're gonna work with one at a time here. So I've got a little soy on there. Now I'm obviously gonna add a little soy while I have it out to uh, the pork that's going in tonight's dish. Let that start to cure a little bit. Now, again, I don't know, I have never had any professional training from a Filipino chef. I don't know the standard methods for when I apply, what ingredient and why as a chef here, but I'm just gonna kind of wing it with what I know from my own career and my own training in life. I've got a little tuba. Tuba is a coconut wine. It's a fermented coconut wine that is direct derivative, comes right off of the tree. They, it's delicious. It's totally drinkable, delicious wine. I've got an episode about it right here that I can show you later on if you want to click it and then come back. This is aged to where it goes from tuba sweet wine to bahal or baharina. Uh, more of a more of a savory wine, and then it turns into a vinegar, and is now coconut wine vinegar. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit to not only the pork for tonight, but the pork for tomorrow as well, just to help with the cure. And the, it works really, really well in meat tenderizing. I also like the flavor, so I'm going to add just a little bit of that, just a little bit of tuba. All right, so my next two ingredients that I'm going to bust out for uh, tonight's dish in a certain manner will be some of this oyster sauce. And for tomorrow's dish will be some of this tamis angkang. This is ketchup, but banana ketchup. Not tomato ketchup, banana ketchup. I actually am liking it. It's a little sweeter. You don't have a lot of the salty vinegar taste that normal American ketchup has. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add this little bit of oyster sauce that I have in with tonight's meat. Just the end of this bottle here. And we're gonna go ahead and set this bottle aside because I will reuse it. I will find a use for it, be it a sauce, a marinade, or a vinegar. And then I've got the banana cats up here. Bam! You can even see, you can tell you bought it from a Sorry Sorry store because they always put the price on it. Banana cats up's gonna go in tomorrow's dish. We're gonna uh, toss that and marinate that. And that should be pretty yummy, yummy, yummy for tomorrow. I'm also gonna coat just a little bit on top of the pork loin. Uh, so that I can help rub that in before I add it into the rest of this for the night. Do this over the sink so that I don't make a mess anywhere other than the sink, because Lord knows I make a mess every time I do something. Make sure that there's a nice even coating on your pork. And now we're gonna grab our pork loin, and we're gonna add that to the mix. Oh yeah, make sure that that cuts up gets all over it. Flip it around, get a little bit of the rest of that marinade on there. And that is good to go. So we are gonna let that sit in the fridge overnight, marinade, cure, and tenderize. And that will be our ingredients for tomorrow night's dish. All right, we'll set this in the fridge. Okay, so I'm, I'm cleaning out the oyster sauce bottle that we uh, just emptied here. Uh, I've got a little bit of uh, vinegar and a little bit of distilled water in here. Cleaned it out, it's good to go. I'm getting this ready because I'm getting ready to use some coconut milk, but I'm not gonna use all the coconut milk. And like I said, a lot of things come in these Capri Sun style pouches here in the Philippines. So once you cut it open, it's open. So you always need to have some kind of storage container ready for when you don't use the rest of your ingredients. Before I get to work with uh, all of our perishables and our raw vegetables, I wanna make sure that I get all of the pork baboy juices off of my equipment and utensils in my tiny kitchen here, because the tinier the kitchen, the easier it is for cross-contamination issues. I have already been down a couple of times with some blood-borne pathogen illnesses and a couple other sicknesses from cross-contamination. Pretty gnarly burger, some pretty gnarly chicken, and I think some bad fish one time. So I'm always a little careful. You never can be too safe. All right, so our station's clean. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the mango beans first off. Uh, they seem to be doing pretty good. So I see that some are starting to float and uh, some are not, but I can start to smell the flavors coming from it. I'm gonna go ahead now and just add a little bit of salt or sal to uh, our recipe to start, just to get a little bit of flavor and a little bit of that salinity in there. We're gonna use a lot more here in a little bit, but just enough to get her started. For me personally, the choice to add a little bit of sesame oil for flavor and aromatics, it's 
kind of just my thing. It's one of my favorite things to use and it is readily accessible here in the Philippines. So we're also gonna drop in a little bit of oyster sauce just to give it a little bit more flavor and color. Mix that up. Man, as soon as you add sesame oil to anything, oof, and it starts to cook off, it smells so good. It's time for some coconut cream milk. Uh, Coco Mama. I think it's very delicious. I mean, you honestly, you could, you could just bottoms up the whole thing if you want to, but we're, we're gonna be conservative here today. Uh, and we are gonna start adding some of that in now. And then I am going to take the rest of it and pour it into this bottle that we pr prepared for it. Because Lord knows I might make some Kenny Lau later this week, so I'm gonna need some of this coconut milk. All right, so she's starting to turn color. She's starting to uh, look like what I would basically have as a traditional mango bean soup uh, going right now. All right, so we're, we're moving on to our veggies. I've got a couple glow. I've got about half a full clove of garlic. We're also gonna mince one red onion. We're just gonna go ahead and smash all that down. Give it a quick chop. Down to a nice little dice size. And we'll sweep all that up. Boom, into the mix. Okay, time for our red onion. Alyssa has a pretty severe allergy to the capsaicin released in these onions. So every time I chop one of these bad boys, here's, How I put on your, your goggles? here's the before. All right, so red onion time. Boom. Chop the top off. Chop the bottom off. Right in the middle. Give it a quick peel. We give it a, a little lengthy chop here. More like a light, small julienne. Boom. Diced onion, baby. And boom, into the mix. Next up is uh, some of our chilies here. These are more like a serrano. We're just gonna go ahead and cut little chili rings. A little sweet and spicy. Bam, into the mix. All right, so the last ingredient that I've gotta grab is some of my malangai. This beautiful little round green leaf. Uh, it's a native plant here that grows on the side of the roads. Uh, I picked this a little bit ago. I left it outside because I didn't want it to wither and wilt in the air con inside our studio. Now we're gonna go ahead and pluck these off the stem and drop these in the soup. Mmm, fresh greens, local. Side of the road. Pretty easy to pick. Um, you just, you're just picking them off the stem. They come right off. There's almost no struggle to this. And that's what a malungai stick should look like after you have harvested it. Into the mix. Pow. So we've got our base going. It already smells freaking flippin' amazing. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our pork. And this is why we've kept the sauce level and soup level really low in the pot. Because once we add the pork, we don't want anything to overflow. So we got the pork here, looking good. Been marinating for a little bit. Boom, in the mix. Oh, that's got a lot of meat on it, wow. And then our marinade. And that rest of that pork fat, boom. All right, so we've got everything in the soup. We added the pork and the meat and the bones. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and add some more water. So we're gonna uh, get water out of our drinking water here. And we're just gonna let it simmer for a while. We're gonna sit down and relax while our tiny little studio becomes completely enveloped with smells and flavors. And, uh, add the water just like that. And then we're just gonna close it up. It's covered, it's rolling, all the ingredients are in. Short, simple, sweet, delicious, lummy lummy. And, uh, we're gonna sit back and relax. I'm gonna have me a little uh, sip of this tandoai that I got just a little bit left of here. We're gonna enjoy uh, life here in the Philippines and let dinner simmer for a while. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit later. All right, 15 minute check on this soup. Let's see how she's looking. Oh, she smells delicious. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what my sexy chef is doing. <laughs> You're working on the next episode. I'm trying. Uh, I'm up here checking out our channel and uh, making sure we're good to go there. And then also I'm down here working on the next episode. Let me tell you, it is amazing. This episode is out of this world. Man, we just have this epic, amazing time all day. So if you haven't gone back and watched it, the channel this time on this episode go back and watch this episode right after this one so i'm over here working getting this final edit done and i'm like hey how's the one hour simmer check going and she's just over here inhaling it it's delicious yeah i can't help myself and what was our last little ingredient that we added at the half hour mark 
unripe papaya. Unripe papaya. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at the cartilage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to let that go. Um, and we're going to let it ride for maybe another 45 minutes or so. All right. So we're right about 90 minute mark with this soup. Uh, it looks amazing. It smells amazing. We've already done a taste test at an hour. It was so good. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bones and uh, carefully one at a time we're going to pull the bones. I'm going to set this up right here. That way that they can cool for a second to where we can get the meat off of them. Check out this marrow coming out now. O-M-G-G. So I've got a little secret weapon for this marrow here. a cracker. Wow. We're going to take those and drop them right back in. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. It's cooking and rolling. We took the bones out. We let them cool down for a minute. Now we've plucked them all. We've got it all right here. I've got it all with a little bit more of the leaf. The pork meat, fat, and tendon is going to go back in and it's going to continue to roll and boil for a little while. We're almost there. And of course, I got the most Filipino thing you can get in the world. So, get that going. Got my two bites ready. She's starving over here. I'm so hungry. And she knows it's good already, too. It's delicious. <laughs> Let's eat. Smells so good. Yeah, this is this is like next level at this point. Um, <laughs> it's so good. Um, okay, so I've got all of the meat and tendons here and fat from the bones. Um, we're gonna add those back in now that all the bones are gone. We're gonna add some more leaf. We're gonna let this roll a little bit longer. I really don't know what this has become. I'm sure there's a term for this, but it's freaking flipping amazing. Now it's time for the two most favorite things you can do in the Philippines. Yeah. Find yourself. Drop your lid. <clears throat> Find yourself a baso, baso or cup. Find yourself some tandoai. Oh no, why is the rum always gone? And of course, diabetic number one path in the world, Coca-Cola. Remember why we get the yellow cap though. It is different. Ooh. A little bit of ice goes a really long way when you bring your Walmart USA Ozark Trail fake Yeti, or as we like to call it, Weddy tumbler with you. Your ice lasts all night. Ooh, rum coke. All right, we've reached the best part of the entire night, two hours sitting here wondering, is my recipe good? Did it work out? And is it gonna be delicious? Or mazarap, or lami lami kaeyo. We've got the rice going. I know this is Alyssa's favorite part. She actually gets to eat my delicious meals. Um, let's take a look here. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Wow. This looks freaking amazing. I honestly, I'm, I'm so happy right now. Drooling. Drooling. I'm so ready. This this looks amazing. Now here's the big kicker. I do not have a ladle right now. We have very, we're, we're just primitive to what we have in front of us. So uh, this is our ladle for this session. And uh, we're just gonna come in here like that. And we're gonna go like that. And, uh, that's good. Yeah, right there, babe. Yeah. Boom. That's what you get. Oh, that looks so delicious. Yes. Yeah. Bon appetit. That smells so good. Oh my god. I'm, okay, I'm gonna go for the first bite. That's so good. American chef in the Philippines, making Filipino food. I love this. Mongo beans, papaya, fresh herbs from down the street, coconut milk, fresh chiles, onion, garlic, pork, pork bone marrow. It's Amazing. Hey, stop eating my food. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's eat. Mm. 